In this chapter, we will talk about several export options that we have in Notch. First of all, of course, we can export our designs as video. All we have to do is go to the render tab. And here we can choose, we want to render out the frame and we can set in all of the variables that we want for our still or a video that again has all of the expected choices for rendering a video. Now, mind you, we are looking at the path three scene. So you can actually define refine facets directly here in the render tab for frame and for a video. Now, if we go to the view, we can call out the render queue and render queue works by drag and dropping the desired composition directly to it or by right clicking and adding to the queue. Items that we add to the render queue will be available for us in a render panel. And here we can make choices in accordance to our wishes and engage either selected or all compositions. Now I'll come back to the scene. I'll hit five to go to the orb view and I'll find one element of interest. Let's say this text node right here. You may have noticed that whenever you scroll through properties in a properties panel, you get a little drop down icon next to the name of the property. If you click on it, you have different types of exposed parameters. We will talk about them all, but first of all, I would like to draw your attention to the expose to render queue. So I'm going to find the property called text string and I will expose that to render queue. So now if I commit this composition to the render queue, I can actually alter this text string directly here. So basically I don't have to to make copies of this composition and change text if I need to. I can expose this property and it will be available for me in the render queue. And I'll be able to duplicate this composition, define a path and change the text input. And so instead of setting up several compositions here, I can literally expose parameters that I want to be a variable in the renderer and change those parameters directly here in the exposed values field. Exposing properties to render extends from simple stuff like text to a complex choices when it comes to rendering. Right, so this is exporting videos and stills, but there is so much more on offer when it comes to Notch. If I go to project, I can see that I can compile a standalone application and I can compile a block for media server. So let's look at those two properties now. In order to do that, I will grab the first layer here, real time scene start, and I will save it as a separate composition. So I'll go to file, save composition, I'll make sure that it's there on the desktop. So now Notch took specifically this composition and saved it separate from all of this work file. Of course, I can merge it back if I choose so. I can go for merge projects, I can navigate to the file that I want to merge with, and I can just click open and it will be then added to this composition. So I'm saving this composition separately just so we have a little bit less clutter and we can focus on exporting those two options. So I'll close this down and I'll navigate and find the newly exported composition. Here it is, real-time scene, start. So it does not take much effort to export this scene as a standalone application. If, if I go for project, compile standalone application, I just have to define where I want this to go. So I'll call this executable and I'll drop everything related to this export here. So I can close this scene, go to the executable folder and find the real-time scene start.executable. Here I'm prompted with several choices. What card should I use? What resolution should it run? And which display should it be displayed on? I'm gonna choose a bit smaller resolution so it doesn't fill the whole screen space. And I'm gonna hit run. And here we are. The scene we just exported is running as executable as a standalone application. So I'll close it off by hitting escape and I'll come back to my real time scene start. So now let's talk about exposing parameters that you can control either in standalone application or in a compiled block for media server. Let's look around this scene and see if we can make small improvements before we start exposing properties. First of all, I would like to have a dynamic camera here. In this case, we just have one camera that is looking to the very scene that we've created. Now, what I would like to do is have two positions, one position which would show the whole composition and the other one that would zoom in to this video feed. Later on, we can expose this as a live video camera feed. 
So for this task to be accomplished, I will need a smoothing null. So if I connect the smoothing null to the root, you will notice that we have an input for nulls. So we can actually type in two sets of coordinates where we would like our camera to exist. So in this case, this space right here is already one place where the camera should live. So I'm going to make a null connected to the input here, and I will copy out the whole transform panel. So I can highlight the transform, press control C, highlight the transform on the null and press control V. Now these coordinates are matched. So my next step is to make another set of coordinates for the next position for this smoothing null. So all I want is a close-up of this specific area of my scene. So here I could grab another null connected to the smoothing null, copy out the transform properties and be done with it. But there is another way to do it as well. I can unhook the camera, place it here to the side, make a copy of that and then right click, replace node with 3D null. So instead of copying parameters, I just change the nature of the node and it still retain the positional values. So I'll use that as a second positional value. And now the original camera that I had, I'll make sure the transforms are in a zero position. We don't want any information here in the transforms because we're going to inherit it from these two nulls. So I'm connecting it to the smoothing null. And now if I hit space, The selected null index zero is the first camera position and one is the second one. And I can dynamically shift from one to the other. Great. So this would be one of the parameters that I would like to expose for further use in a media server or standalone application. So I'll press on a little drop down triangle here and I'm going to go for expose to block. Once I do that, a new node appears in the scene, which then shows me all of the things that are exposed. So here I can find a specific property that I just exposed and change, for instance, its naming convention. I'm going to call this camera position. Now it's extremely handy to preview these properties right here in the node, but we can call out one more panel, remote, and via remote, we can actually interact with the parameter that we just exposed. Let's expose a couple of more parameters. I think I would like to control this fog. So first of all, I'll find it in the node graph. And I think it's here. Yes, it is. And what I want to control is the alpha property of both of these nodes. Now I could of course expose them separately one by one, or I can do something a little bit smarter. I can use a value modifier. So value modifier is just like a virtual slider. So what I can do is grab both image planes, reduce alpha to zero here and connect a value modifier to this property. So now I'm using this one slider to control them both at the same time. So this very slider is what I'm going to expose now to a block. And I see a new value coming in. That's good. I'll just give it the name. And let's call it and let's call it fog. There we go. So now in the remote, I can choose to make it visible or invisible. Fantastic. What else should we expose? Well, I would say that these lightnings are quite nice, but perhaps it could be, perhaps it would be useful to have a choice. Do we want to see them or not? So here I have the whole rig that we created with the lightnings. And for this to become an on off switch, I think we need yet another logic node. So I'm going to go for execute child node. So I'll connect execute child node to the root. I'll disconnect the select child node and I'll pipe it through the execute child node. So the execute child node allows me to either engage or disengage all the nodes that are connected to it. And that's literally the switch I was looking for. So I'm going to expose this to a block. Mm, 
let's find this property. Let's call this lightning. There we go. And one more or the last property that I would like to expose would be one of these text nodes. So let's say let's grab the artist. So I'm going to hit five, navigate to this geometry, F1 to find it in the node graph. And I'm going to choose the text string and I'm going to expose it to block. There it is. I see it's available for me. So if I double click, I can change the text here. I can type in something like, hello. So all of these properties that I've just exposed will be available for me should I choose to go for a standalone application or a media server. Now, when it comes to media servers, these properties then will be available inside of the bespoke media server UI. So how would you control all of those parameters in the standalone application? Well, if you go for project settings, you will see that there is a property called notch remote and it's enabled. If it's disabled for you by default, just enable it and just keep in mind this port number 8910. So now if I go to any browser that is available for me and type in localhost with that port number 8910, I have access to the very same panel we were interacting so far. So I can engage and disengage the scene from the browser and I can turn on or off specific parameters that I've exposed. Right, so with that said, let's expose one more parameter. In this case, the video input for this space right here. And I can do that by navigating to the video loader that is being displayed here. And all I have to do is click on a video exposed to block. So with that done, I can use any other video feed that is available, let's say in a media server or a live video camera to use in this specific space. And to complete the process, obviously I just have to go for project, compile block for media server. I'll just drop it on the desktop. And now I can grab this very block and use it in a variety of media servers. So here is me playing back the very same scene in several most popular ones. Right, so back to this scene then. Let's grab some kind of a property. For instance, this 3D object right here. If I go back to the Expose Properties panel, you will notice that there's an option to expose to Artnet. So this is most useful with a standalone application when you want to control the variables via, let's say, Lightdesk. However, there are more control options in Notch, and those then comes in a shape of a modifier. So let's say you want to use a MIDI controller to control the scene. Well, we have a modifier for that. You just have to go for project, settings, MIDI. Make sure that the MIDI device that you want to use is available and selected. And once that is done, it will be available here in the dropdown. Then just click listen for channel, slide the slider or hit the button. And then that channel or that specific slider corresponds with whatever you connected it as a modifier. Same goes with OSC. We have OSC modifier. Now, obviously for that, you have to again go to project settings and in protocols, make sure that you enable OSC and set in the correct port and correct IP address. And then in the OSC modifier, you'll be able to write a string or an address of the slider or a button that you're calling out. And that's pretty much job done. Right, so I think this concludes the export chapter. Thank you for sticking around and I hope this was useful and interesting.